This week, Breeding Cash features a farmer in Wasingishu County who is breeding cash literally at the heart of Eldoret Town, the principal city in western Kenya. Lying south of the Cherangani Hills, the local elevation varies from 2,100 meters above sea level at the airport to more than 2,700 meters in nearby areas. This climate makes the environment conducive for agricultural activities such as dairy farming. Just a few kilometers from Eldoret International Airport sits Dell's farm, home to Daniel Drotich. The farmer has well and truly utilized the potential of his two and a quarter acre land. Dell's Farm Limited total daily earnings are estimated as 100,000 Kenya shillings. On a good day, rotis can collect 250 liters of milk, 100 kgs of mushrooms, compost fertilizer, 70 pallets of strawberries, 200 quills, eggs, biogas, and 11 crates uh, of tomatoes. My profession is actually um, animal husbandry. That's where I, what I did in college. And then I diversified into many, many things, into agroforestry, agriculture. Mm. But uh, having been dealing with the farmers yes. out there, training them, mm. talking about uh, productivity in dairy and productivity on the farm, mm. I decided maybe I start myself so that I set an example. An example. And then we can, uh, the farmers I train can also come see what I do so that what I preach yes. is also what I'm doing. And that's exactly how I started. So I started with about five dairy cows. Mm. And then I have improved. Like currently, we have maybe about 30. Mm. Uh, and um, the, the reason behind me starting is because here in Wasangishu, mm. there is availability of feed almost throughout the year. Mm. And then uh, the market for milk. Yes. Uh, either through the KCC, Brookside, or even through the local consumption, is very high. That, that, so there's no day you can have your milk and say you have not sold it. So it, that was the motivation. That I was said, the motivation. Yeah, the market is there. The market is there. And uh, maybe something else that I can also ask is now, from uh, on a good day, from the 100,000 that you make maybe per day, an estimate, how much comes from, how much does it come from uh, uh, the dairy farming? Yeah, at, uh, from the dairy, we, at some time, not too long ago, we were taking to KCC something like 250 liters every day. So with a price of 40 shillings uh, per liter, mm. that is what we would call from the dairy mm. at 250 liters per day at 40 shillings. That is what would come from the dairy. Getting 40 liters from uh, one... Uh, 40 shillings per, uh, per, per, uh, per, per liter. Per liter. Yeah. And uh, I meant to understand that uh, you, uh, on a good day, your dairy cows can produce up to maybe between 30 and 40 liters per day. So what exactly do you do so that you can have uh, that much? Uh, one, we do our feed formulation here. Mm. We buy the raw materials and we just uh, formulate our feed. And the way we do it, we formulate uh, according to the production of our cows. So there are those who are low producers mm. and we have those that are high producers. So we, we formulate the feed as according to their production. So uh, uh, the ones that give us more, mm. the, concent the concentrate we give them is of better, of a higher value. And that is uh, how we, we try to, to make sure that they, we get the maximum from each cow, but they are different. Yeah, uh, talking about formulation, now let's go to the details. Yeah. Uh, from uh, what I saw in that uh, place that you do the formulation, mm -hmm. you have molasses, yeah. you have corn there. So yeah. how exactly do you mix and uh, how is that nutritional formulation? The main thing what we need to, to balance is the, the, the nutritional aspect of it, is the, mm. the protein, the energy, and the, when we do that, we, we use various uh, things. We have the cotton uh, seed cake, we have the sunflower, we have our, our maize, which is the, 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 main, uh, the main thing behind the concentrates. So, and then we, we look at all the, the, the nutritive value that we, the cow needs. And then we just buy the raw materials locally 
and we bring actually most of our raw material from across the border, from Uganda, mm. that will, we will use to formulate our feed. So, so basically, we make sure we make a complete meal. Complete meal. Complete meal for the cow. Yeah. Now, talking about the complete meal, now, when uh, I was there, I meant to understand at one point you use molasses. Yes. Now, there are those farmers that say once you introduce your cows to molasses, there is no one time they will have their feeds without molasses. How true is that? And uh, what's your observation concerning that, the use of molasses in feeds? The use of molasses is basically actually, um, in fact, uh, the only thing the molasses does in the, in the cow is to stimulate the microorganisms in the rumen. Sure. And those microorganisms are the ones that break down the feed so that the, the, the energy and the proteins, the cow now can access it. So it, the cow is not really using the molasses directly, but it is feeding the microorganisms in, this, in the rumen of the cow mm. so that they are able to, br to break down the, the feeds. So, so I think uh, in terms of mm. saying the cows will not be able to, to use, I think it may not be completely true mm, okay. because it just only gives the, the smell is nice for the cow. But then when you also formulate the other uh, feeds, which is the, the concentrates, mm. once it is properly done, they also smell and they will eat without molasses. So okay. maybe it depends on what kind of really feed. It's mainly the dry feed. Mm. The, the bomaro, sometimes we use the, the maize stovers, and that is where you need to introduce a little bit of that molasses to give the, the strength, the microorganisms, to break down. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm still uh, uh, with the feeds. Yeah. Now, uh, you've talked about what we can call as the traditional kind of feeding, you know, the hay, the nipper grass and all that, that kind of formulation. Mm -hmm. But then nowadays we have the feeds that uh, people are getting from other shops. So for your case, do you use them? Do you use the, the likes we see, the brands and all that? Yeah, I know we like the unga feeds and all that. Mm. But uh, for us, the, when we formulate our feed, we, we think and we know it's even better than unga feeds. Because mm. at the end of the day, we know exactly what is in that feed. When I give to my cow, I know what that cow is eating. The one we get from the shop, mm. anything is possible. You, it, it can be very good formulated feed, mm. or it can be feeder material that is in that feed. So unless really a farmer has a way of analyzing, there is, unless there is a, a, a lab where you can get that feed, and then you can now say, this feed is very good for my cows. For me, I, I thought, I decided I better do it myself so that whatever I'm giving with my cow, I know what that my cow is eating. So, so on that, I, I think uh, I have the confidence. Have the but uh, in terms of uh, my cows, I'm using dry feed throughout. I don't have the nebia grass mm. because I don't have enough land to okay. grow the nebia grass. So most of my cows, I'm using Dry feed. Dry feed. Dry feed completely. And uh, how do you compare the use of uh, the likes of napier grass to dry feeds uh, for those that have space to do napier grass? It is, it is okay. It, mm. it is okay because uh, when, you are, when, you, when you use the, the napier, you see the digestibility is even faster and better. The availability of the nutrients is, is faster also. So if somebody has land, to produce the 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 nebia grass, it is it is still very okay. It, it is okay. It's definitely okay. But it will also be good to into, to have some form of dry feed, dry even with that nebia. Okay, uh, there are those farmers that say the only way to get a lot of milk is to give uh, a cow dry matter so that it takes a lot of water, which is then translated to a lot of milk. Is that true? Well, uh, I would want to think. To say that uh, the, the dry feed, yes, mm. does help the cow to take as much water as is possible because it's actually the water that assists the, the cow to mm. produce more. Mm. But then if, if the, the farmer was using only the, the nebia grass mm. as such, then definitely the, even the consumption of water is very low. Because mm. they, they, there is a lot of water in the, in the nebia grass. So they, I would say, that's why I was saying it is better they use some nebia grass, but 
there is a, a very good proportion of the dry feed so that that cow would be able now to consume the water that it needs, that it needs. In, for production. There is that farmer who wants to start dairy farming. So in terms of the breed uh, to keep, the feeds, and all that, uh, whatever that surrounds dairy farming, what's the most important thing to consider when a farmer wants to venture in this kind of farming? If they want to venture into commercial uh, um, dairy farming, one is first the source of the feed. Mm. If the feed is readily available within the area, because the transportation cost is, is normally prohibitive, if it is very far. So the first thing would be, where is the source of the feed? And then the second thing would be also they, they, they need to do proper housing mm. where they will have uh, good hygiene. As if you will see where my cows sleep, mm. each one of them has got their own mattress oh. because that uh, helps in terms of uh, cleanliness. When you come to, to milk them, the, the germs, the, the contact between the cow mm. and, and, the, and the germs is, re is reduced, highly reduced. Because so, so it is the feed and it's the, the, the availability of space to, to, to build that, that unit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, of course, uh, in terms of the breeds of cattle that you keep, uh, how do you manage that and uh, which is the best breed, so to ask, if you may comment on that? I think uh, depending on what you want to do with the dairy, mm. uh, uh, unfortunately, currently in, 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 in Kenya, Mm. We have not reached a, a situation where uh, the quality of the milk is actually measured. So we are hoping in the mm. very near future, mm. we are going to be paid for the quality of your milk. When we measure the, the, the content of your milk, mm. and then because it is done in the European countries, yes. so you are paid according to the quality of your milk. But here in Kenya, we are still only talking about the volume currently. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, and, and talking of uh, other countries, I know you've been to Netherlands, but uh, right now, let's take a short break. But when we come back, we'll still uh, be going to the details of dairy farming here in Wasingishu, that is Eldoret. So Daniel Drotich will tell us more about now the byproducts. After dairy farming, we have manure, we have biogas. What happens? Keep it WTV. We shall be right back. <laughs> 